Welcome to Investigating the Universe, where we unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. Today, we delve into an iconic chapter of space exploration, the Apollo 11 moon landing, a mission that forever etched the names of its astronauts into the annals of history. In the heart of the 20th century, an era characterized by the Cold War tensions and a global space race, emerged the Apollo 11 mission. Under the aegis of NASA, the United States embarked on a journey that was not just about winning a race. It was about venturing into the unknown, pushing the boundaries of human capabilities and inspiring generations to dream and dare. At the forefront of this mission was Neil Armstrong, a man of exceptional courage and composure, joined in his journey by astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. Armstrong, a seasoned test pilot and an engineer, was chosen to command this mission, a selection that came with immense responsibility and the weight of a nation's expectations. The Apollo 11 mission was scheduled for July 16, 1969. Its purpose? To carry out a national goal set by President John F. Kennedy almost a decade earlier, to perform a crude lunar landing and return safely to Earth. This mission was more than just an ambitious endeavor. It was a testament to human resilience, ingenuity, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. In the midst of the Cold War, the mission took on a deeper significance. It was a symbolic demonstration of technological superiority, a peaceful exploration that held within it the potential to tip the scales of global power. The world watched, their breath held in anticipation, as three men prepared to embark on a journey that would take them over 200,000 miles away from the safety of their home planet. So, the stage was set for one of the most monumental events in human history. The journey to the moon, an endeavor no less than an epic adventure. The Apollo 11 mission, a testament to human courage and ingenuity, embarked on an incredible voyage, a journey of about 240,000 miles that stretched the boundaries of what we thought was possible. The astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins had been trained intensively, but no amount of training could fully prepare them for the unknown challenges of space travel. Space, the final frontier, is an environment fraught with risks. The danger of radiation, the potential for equipment failure, and the sheer isolation of being so far from home all were hurdles they had to face. The spacecraft, a marvel of technology, was equipped with the most advanced systems of its time to ensure the crew's safe journey. The Saturn V rocket, standing taller than the Statue of Liberty, was the vehicle that would carry them to the moon. It was a machine of immense power, designed to overcome the strong gravitational pull of the Earth. And then there was the suspense, the anticipation that built up during the travel. As Apollo 11 moved further from Earth, the world watched with bated breath, sharing in the excitement and anxiety of the mission. Each stage of the journey was a milestone, a step closer to achieving a dream that had captivated humanity for centuries. The spacecraft, leaving behind our blue planet, journeyed through the cold emptiness of space, crossing the vast lunar distance. And as they approached the moon, the astronauts saw it not as a distant celestial body, but as a destination, a place they were about to touch and explore. After a journey fraught with risks, the Apollo 11 finally touched the lunar surface. The dream was no longer a dream. It was a reality, a moment of triumph, a testament to the indomitable spirit of exploration that defines us as a species. A moment of triumph, a moment of awe, the first man sets foot on the moon. On July 20th, 1969, the world held its breath as Neil Armstrong, commander of Apollo 11, became the first human to tread the lunar surface. As he descended the lunar module's ladder, billions watched through their television screens, their hearts pounding in unison with Armstrong's. The silence was shattered as Armstrong's voice crackled over the radio, uttering the now immortal words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These simple, yet profound words encapsulated the magnitude of the feat achieved, not just for the United States, but for all of humanity. The world erupted into celebration as people from all walks of life reveled in this shared achievement. From the bustling streets of New York to the quiet corners of rural India, the triumph was felt universally. It was a moment that transcended borders and language barriers, 
a rare unity that the world had seldom seen. But Armstrong and his crewmate Buzz Aldrin didn't have much time for celebration. They were on a scientific mission, and there was work to be done. They set up a series of experiments, including the Passive Seismic Experiment Package to measure moonquakes and the Lunar Dust Detector to measure the accumulation of lunar dust. They also collected moon rocks, some of which were basaltic in nature, providing clues about the moon's volcanic history. The samples, weighing a total of 47 pounds, continue to be studied today, revealing more and more about our celestial neighbor. The moonwalk lasted a mere two and a half hours, but its impact was timeless. Armstrong's footprints, still visible on the moon today, symbolize mankind's insatiable curiosity and our inherent desire to explore the unknown. Armstrong's footprints were more than just impressions in the lunar dust, they were the mark of a new era for mankind. The mission was only half accomplished, the brave astronauts still had to return. The most daunting part of the Apollo 11 mission was not the journey to the moon, but the return trip to Earth. After all, what good is a journey if you can't make it back home? Leaving the moon, the lunar module, aptly named the Eagle, docked with the command module Columbia, which orbited the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin transferred back into Columbia, leaving behind the Eagle. The astronauts, now back in Columbia, fired up the engines for the return journey home, a trip that would take approximately three days. Upon reaching Earth's atmosphere, the command module had to endure temperatures of up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This intense heat was caused by the friction between the spacecraft and Earth's atmosphere. The heat shield, a critical component of the spacecraft, was designed to protect the astronauts from this extreme heat. The command module, with its heat shield facing forward, entered Earth's atmosphere at a speed of approximately 25,000 miles per hour. The module's descent was slowed by a series of parachutes, which were deployed at spe specific altitudes to ensure a safe and controlled descent. After what must have felt like an eternity, the command module splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, about 800 miles southwest of Hawaii. The world watched with bated breath as the recovery team, which included divers and helicopters from the USS Hornet, raced to the splashdown site. Upon reaching the capsule, divers attached a flotation collar to keep it afloat. The astronauts, after spending more than a week in space, were finally back on Earth. Their return sparked worldwide celebrations. The astronauts were hailed as heroes and were welcomed with parades and accolades. They had done what no human had done before. They had traveled to the moon and back. But perhaps the most poignant moment came when Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, said, we came in peace for all mankind. These words echoed around the world, a testament to the human spirit and our insatiable curiosity. The astronauts returned as heroes, their mission a resounding success. But amidst the jubilation, whispers of a moon landing conspiracy began to surface. As the world celebrated the momentous achievement of landing a man on the moon, a section of society started to question the authenticity of the event. The theories were as wild as they were numerous. Among the most popular was the waving flag theory. Skeptics claimed that the American flag, planted by Armstrong, appeared to ripple in the breeze, a phenomenon impossible in the moon's vacuum. However, experts were quick to debunk this. The flag's apparent movement was due to the twisting motion Armstrong used to implant the pole into the lunar surface. Once set, the flag's natural elasticity gave the illusion of a breeze. Then there was the absence of stars theory. Critics pointed out that none of the photographs or videos from the moon landing showed stars in the moon's sky. This, they argued, was evidence of a hoax. But this theory ignores a basic principle of photography, exposure. The moon's surface, bathed in direct sunlight, was brightly lit, while the stars were far dimmer. To capture the astronauts on the lunar surface, the cameras had to be set for daylight exposure, which made the dimly lit stars invisible. Another theory suggested that the Van Allen radiation belts surrounding Earth would have been lethal to pass through. However, NASA had calculated the spacecraft's trajectory to avoid the thickest parts of these belts, minimizing the astronauts' exposure to radiation. There were many more theories, each more imaginative than the last, but scientific evidence and expert analysis have debunked them all. 
Despite the conspiracy theories, the Apollo 11 mission stands as a testament to human achievement. It's a reminder that when we dare to dream big and work together, there's no limit to what we can accomplish. The moon landing was not a brilliantly orchestrated hoax, but a brilliantly executed mission that forever changed our understanding of what is humanly possible.